Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Unshackled Waves, episode nine. You're here with your editors in chief, uh, me, Tim Wilms, and of course, Sukith Fernando. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is our Tuesday review show where we discuss the week's news and events and inform our listeners about the, the latest ban- battles against the, the enemies of freedom. So there is, of course, more reaction to, to Trump's victory, uh, both here in the United States as people are still scratching their heads to try and understand why he won. We know why he, why he won, don't we? We do. I mean, we have the logical reason for why he, why he won. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but of course, the the uh, the reasons that the left come up with about why he won, they must be because oh, uh, he cheated somehow, and of yeah. course, and of course, one of the the reasons that they came up with uh, uh, that he won was uh, because of uh, fake news. Uh, <laughs> people voted for him because there was all this fake news on the internet that uh, people just gullibly believed. Well. That's very ironic, isn't it, Tim? Because we know the fake news actually came from the mainstream media because we know they lied for Hillary. So um, I don't know what they're talking about, really. Yeah. Uh, well, it's well, it's basically the, uh, this whole thing about fake news. And, of course, the social media sites like Facebook, they're, an, uh, they're announcing a, a crackdown on on fake news but of course uh, it comes from from both sides the the fake the fake news and of course uh comes from the the mainstream media as well not just fake news but also uh deliberately omitting news for uh, omitting news i mean obviously mainstream media they they didn't report on wikileaks at all yeah, it's a. It was a very selective um, sort of portrayal of the news because, they, as you said, they ignored um, WikiLeaks. They ignored many of what Hillary did um, in favor of just showing all the minute things Trump did, and they are still sort of doing it now. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, they omitted news. They portrayed lies, um, and it's really hilarious how they're sort of blaming other people's fake news for the victory. Yeah, oh, and they also failed to fa- uh, fail to mention uh, the rape allegations against, against Bill Clinton, which had actually been around for 20 years, but yeah. you know, were just still completely ignored by the mainstream, uh, mainstream media. Yeah, in favor of, again, in favor of those false allegations against against Trump, which have been debunked. Yeah, which, um, which came out, what, three weeks before the election. Exactly. I mean, 35 years afterwards of when it allegedly happened and three weeks before the election, um, they were paid to say it. So, you know, I wouldn't really, if I was the left, I would just sort of um, keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Uh, and and they're mainly blaming the or they're they're saying that the the new media the online uh, news media is responsible for all this uh, fake news, which is, it's basically a massive tantrum because uh, the left no longer control the media. I mean, it's not it's not just you know CNN, the New York Times, which gets to report the news. There's all these new conservative sites now that uh, are willing to to tell the truth to people, and of course. The left can't handle that and uh, just cry. They must be fake because basically every site that we disagree with, that's a fake alt-right site. Um, Yeah, I mean, um, they're using the same argument they use to sort of discredit um, minority supporters of Trump. So, for example, they said um, the gays for Trump and the women for Trump, they were confused um, because they um, by voting for Trump. So they, they were confused with fake sort of alt-right media and that's what prompted them to vote for Trump. So it's the same argument. Um, it's the same argument of denial that's happening in the left right now. You know, those people were conf- confused and the alt-right media is to blame for that, is to blame for that. So um, I think it just shows the lack of responsibility with the left. And of course, the Unshackled got accused of being a, a fake news yes. site. Yes, we did. There was a comment that said we were an old right. I mean, we're not even old right. <laughs> um, that said we were an old right fake news site. Um, okay, what else? <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, that's uh, you know they completely overlooked that all of our articles they're all fully fully referenced and uh, you can fact check them for yourselves. Yeah, exactly. We have links in the articles. Um, embedded into the actual article. Um, so we have we have evidence. I mean, 
the thing is, the thing is, we are at a point in society where people think the truth is now lies. You know, it's the truth is so alarming that it sounds like a lie, um, and that's sort of what. That was one of the reasons why we actually founded the Unshackles because of that sort of mindset in society. So you know, I, I'm not surprised um, that they think our reporting is fake because I do admit that you know some of what we report are alarming, but that's the truth. You know, that's how it is. Get triggered, but you know, too bad. Yeah, and, and of co- and of course, uh, it's been pr- it's 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 been as easy as ever to fact check stories today i mean uh if i see a story which is sort of a bit out of the ordinary uh, on facebook and uh i'm not uh, like i don't take it at face value i go and fact check it fact check it myself so yeah of course you need to be uh you know be aware that there is fake news out there but it's pretty easy to you know just do a bit of research to find out which, which news is real and which is actually fake yeah, and with the fact checking, I just want to say that there are some official fact checking websites that still um, they do the exact same thing as what the mainstream media does. They sort of they omit particular sources or they lie. Um, we have factcheck.org. Um, it was called. Um, they left out lots of things, um, and you know, you know, they they. So you need said, to fact check the fact checkers as well. Exactly, exactly. We had Snopes, for example. That even they left out lots of things. Um, so and people believe that you know people were using that as arguments people were using those sources of arguments and i was like you know you can't use that because they've left out all this information so they're not exactly fact checking they're just sort of fact checking selectively yeah and, and let's not forget that fake, uh, fake news it comes from both sides of but uh, both sides of politics i mean we all remember the the fake quote from uh donald trump from people magazines where he says that republicans are all stupid yeah, yeah. Again, goes to show that those established media companies are lying. And I mean, the fa- a lot of when they were discussing fake news on on the mainstream TV channels, I mean that the fake news examples that they mentioned were was stuff that you know wasn't you know wasn't that serious. Like the there was one the the Pope endorsed Trump apparently. I mean, I, I could tell just by reading that that that's fake. And then apparently uh, Hillary Clinton uh, sold weapons to ISIS. Well, that would be a half truth because yeah. she's, she's supporting rebels which, uh, which, which, which support ISIS. Yeah, they funded rebels. Um, they directly funded um, terrorist groups. They directly funded Al Qaeda in Iraq. Um, so, but most sites, they do have satire. Um, and they do specify at the end, you know, this is a satirical story. Um, like one I saw about the Queen, uh, for example, that was a satirical, satirical story. So they do specify sometimes. I mean, a healthy skepticism and just common sense will will make sure that you know you're aware of what's fake. Yeah, exactly. You don't need to go around blaming them for ruining the election. People know the truth. People aren't stupid. Um, the left thinks Trump supporters are stupid. We're not. We we know the truth. You don't. <laughs> yeah, Tr- Trump couldn't have possibly won on the issues. It couldn't have been because yeah. his policies are better. It must be because you know, oh, yeah, people are stupid <laughs> to believe gullible stories, and. Yeah, there, there's there's fa- been fake news around forever. I mean, yeah, the, you know those celebrity magazines. I mean, they still come up with you know fake headlines that like there's there, there's this story that keeps popping up that you know Caitlyn Jenner wants to go back to being Bruce. Yeah, yeah, I see all those. I, I mean, they're nothing. I just don't know what to say. <laughs> hmm. and, and of course, they're st- they're still attacking. Um, you know the. Uh, the gr- new uh, growing websites, you know, obviously Breitbart and Infowars. Yeah, yeah. The left tend to laugh at Breitbart a lot. Um, again, it's like you know they 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 laugh at the truth because you know the truth is too triggering. Um, but Breitbart is really good. We yeah. know that. And obviously with Infowars, like some of yeah. what they publish is what you'd call speculation, but yeah, a, a speculation is still part of news commentary. I mean. Yeah. Uh, if it, if it can't be disproved, then it can it can still be it can still be reported. Yeah, it can still be a legitimate um story or a legitimate sort of report, um if there's no proof there's no proof to sort of go against it. Um, because Infowars always provides evidence to support their speculative stories. Um, and you know many of their speculative stories are really 
valid stories. Uh, so, yeah, fake, uh, fake news is you know nothing to be worried about. It's just mm-hmm. it's, ju- it's just the the left excuse about you know oh we would have won if it wasn't for those damn news sites. Yeah, um, they may. I mean, the left is destroying itself from the inside out these days. You know, it's sort of a thing that's happening. They're sort of protesting, assaulting, you know, love Trump's hate, but assaulting, an estimate they're assaulting. So it's one of the reasons, one of the excuses they come up with, you know, we lost because fake news. Um, You know, Hillary should have won. Yeah, nah. (laughs) And of course, we'll go to one of the other uh, uh, reactions to Trump's victory, which is back here in Australia. Uh, Bill Shorten with his Trump-inspired announcement on uh, 457 visas, which, uh, yeah. for those of you who are not aware of that program, it's it's one that allows uh, Australian companies to import foreign workers if they can't find Australian workers who uh, who have those skills. Uh, so, you know, Short, uh, Shorten, you know, you've uh, made this, you know, big announcement saying, you know, we want to put Aussie jobs first. But uh, the the policy itself was really tame. He wanted a longer advertising uh, f- uh, advertising time, which means he wanted uh, the jobs to be advertised in Australia for I think uh, four weeks, so a bit longer than they're currently required uh, to be advertised for. And he also uh, wanted companies which hire four, five, seven foreign workers uh, to train local workers for those positions. So it's pretty modest, uh, uh, modest announcement. Uh, so, so that was his his uh, response to because obviously Trump wants to put American jobs first, and so this was Bill Shorten's response, and also his response to One Nation as well, who um, quite sim- have quite similar policies to Trump. Yeah, um, we had One Nation. We had Pauline Hanson sort of um, happy commending the um, th- that that announcement by Bill Shorten. Um, but in reality, we know that he's trying to sort of um, appease to his um, unions. He's because he's he's a union puppet, so you know he's trying to do that. Um, but I think he's try- he sort of realized that people are sort of sick of the mainstream political view, and um, they want more Trump-ish um, political views from from parties because you know he's he thinks that Trump won because of his views. Well, he did, but he's trying to sort of. Ad- adopt that for himself in an ineffective way um so you know just he's trying to he started he's trying to adapt to this new sort of environment um but he's not doing it well because yeah but but he still like he still publicly criticized trump quite viciously called him you know barking mad after he won talked about how of you know trump has said you know, mean things about various groups and, you know, oh, and Labour Party will never, you know, attack the, the vulnerable people. So he's still, you know, publicly attacking Trump whenever he can. And so is the, so are his other uh, Labour MPs. Yeah, um, he's ignoring the fact that Trump won, not because, not just because of his views on the economy, he won because of his very strong stance against political correctness. Um, you know, we had people who are lefties, who are progressives, um, who are Muslims, who voted for Trump simply because, simply because of his politically incorrect attitude toward everything. Um, and Bill Shorten is ignoring that entire thing because, um, you know, he is a progressive, uh, regressive left, leftist. So you know, he's ignoring that main facet of Trump, which is he was politically incorrect. Um, and that's why he, that's one major reason he actually received lots of voters. So he's ignoring one part, a uh, one major part of Trump, and adopting the other, which is ineffective. Yeah, and his announcement was so disingenuous because, you know, our four five seven uh, visa foreign workers are actually the most useful type of immigrants because you know they yeah. work hard, uh, pay, pay Australian taxes. Yet, uh, in effect, you know, Bill Shorten and the Labor Party they want to still you know, open up the floodgates to, you know, all the refugees and asylum seekers, continue to let, uh, yeah, Muslims in as well. And, of course, we see all the uh, statistics of, you know, refugees and asylum seekers, you know, on welfare, you know, draining our, draining our um, budgets. And so, you know, he wants, to, he wants to stop the useful immigrants, but he wants to let in all the ones who, who don't contribute anything and actually are, are a drain on our system. Yeah, it's he's just doing a desperate political stunt. 
um, because as I said, he's trying to attract those working class, working class white people. Um, but the thing is, you know, he's trying to sort of make us make a political sort of stunt out of it um, by saying that. But the thing is, um, on the other hand, in the in the backstage, he's he wants to take in refugees. He wants to spend welfare um, on on the refugees, fund the refugees. Um, so you know. What's the point, really? Because he, at you know, he's going to waste money anyway. So what's the point? Yeah, and and of course, uh, we heard um, Peter Peter Dutton, the immigration minister, this week, talk about the mistakes in Australia's immigration programs, specifically Malcolm Fraser in the nineteen seventies, which he was referring to um, uh, when a whole lot of Lebanese Muslims were were let into the country, and that has contributed to significantly higher crime rates yeah. uh, today. And of course, Bill Shorten, you know, got up and took the horror migrant saying, oh, you're insulting every immigrant <laughs> who's come since then. So, you know, he makes this announcement, you know, saying we want to put Aussie jobs first, but how dare you criticize immigrants at all? So, you know, yeah. you know what the hell? Exactly. And that that reaction itself shows that um, he hasn't really learned anything. Um, you know, he's doing the exact same thing the left has been doing. That's resulting in them losing supporters um, by by this by doing this sort of um, racist uh, sort of reaction that says, you know, you're racist, you're Islamophobic, for example. Um, that's one reason why people are moving away from those parties, and it just shows that he doesn't understand much. You know, he, he might be trying to sort of appeal to people with his four, five, seven stance, but he, people know that he doesn't understand because um, next minute he's criticizing um, Dutton for, for for his comments and for um, insulting, as he said. Yeah, and he and he did the same during the federal election when when Dutton talked about you know refugees how they're. Uh, a, a lot of them are uh, illiterate in English and, um, you know, uh, f uh, find it difficult to get employment and Bill Shorten criticised him, him as well. So, you know, most ordinary people see right through his, you know, rhetoric about Aussie jobs. It's like, you're not, yeah. you, you're, you don't you don't really want to crack down on, you know, immigration that, that hurts Australia. You're just, you know, trying to sort of appear so. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're just trying to get supporters. You're just trying to sort of lie to people, lie your way to winning the next the next election. Um, but th the thing is, the the positive thing is, people know he's lying. People know what he's up to. People don't trust the left. People don't trust Labour, um, and that's a good thing. You know, that's sort of discrediting. That's further discrediting his own party, and he's. You know, he's paving the path to his own downfall, which is fine. Yeah. And of course, uh, Bill Shorten is not going to either back down on all the all the green programs that Labor supports. He yeah. still wants a fifty percent renewable energy target by uh, twenty thirty. Uh, uh, state Labor governments they're happy to shut down you know coal fired power stations, which is exactly the opposite of what Trump wants to do. He wants to put all the coal miners back to work, uh, tear off the uh, tear up the Paris Climate Agreement, uh, end, all, uh, end all funding to the UN climate change uh, programs, and of course, repeal Obama's executive actions on um, carbon emissions. Yeah, I love, I love those policies. I mean, he said, um, he said he doesn't, he said the truth. He said, we don't know what's happening to our money. We're spending hundreds of billions of dollars on these climate programs and sending money to the UN, but we don't know what they're using it for. Um, so he wants, so he's, um, wants to do something about that. Um, and you know, the thing is, Bill Shorten, but through the, these climate policies, he's actually estranging himself from those sort of rural working class people, um, working class white people. We'll talk about this um, class thing later on, but uh, you know, we've seen this happening for a long time. The left is sort of moving away from those, from that voter base, um, trying to appeal to these inner city hippies um, with their climate change policy, but they're moving away from those hardworking um, Australians who rely on manufacturing and you know, those coal power, power plants for a living. Yeah, I mean, they did nothing when uh, the Hazelwood Power Station, it was announced that it would close yeah. a few weeks back, 750 jobs lost, and it wasn't just uh, Labor, it was the trade union said, oh, we just, you know, want a good package for the workers, didn't even fight for their jobs. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's a that's a con complete betrayal of, of working class people, and of course, it's not just the job losses uh, that occur because of, you know, cl uh, climate change programs, it's also... 
it significantly increases the cost of living through high electricity prices and high cost of goods and services for working class people. I mean, the rich can afford to adjust, but you know, working class people, they see their, their bills go up, yet their, their wages aren't going up as well because of um, government action on you know, alleged climate change. Exactly. Um, you know, they they don't represent the they they don't represent the people anymore. They have their own ulterior motives funded by the trade unions. I mean, I can't believe they said that. That's disgraceful. Um, just they're betraying, as you said, they're betraying the working class, and that's just the sun must be rising from the rest now because that's just shocking. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I mean, you know, they're not looking after, you know, working, work, working class people at all. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, f- no, it, no, it's no wonder that, you know, as, as you say, we'll talk about this later, that yeah. uh, working class people are now turning to, you know, uh, Trump and, and, one, and One Nation. They yeah, are. Um, we've seen a realignment, but we will talk about the topic yeah. later on. And also, yeah. <laughs> also something I didn't mention uh, in the article is that uh, Labor, they all still support, you know, people going to um, u- uh, university and also, you know, people going to all of these, you know, uh, uh, vocational training programs, which, of course, you know, are, are a complete scam and, like, uh, train people in in jobs where they uh, in professions where there is no jobs for yet they're not they're they're not encouraging people to go into industries where there are skill shortages yeah they're trying to um again it's with, it's linked to their rhetoric you know their rhetoric to get supporters they're trying to um sort of fund universities and make sure more people go to university but, but the thing is it doesn't matter if more people go to university because you're just gonna you're just gonna result in a, a high competition for students, as in students will have to comp- compete with more students to get to particular um, places in the workplace. You know, you know, you're not exactly doing anything. It's just, okay, it's a political stunt. Okay, there is no, there is no tangible benefit um, by funding universities and making university free because you're just going to end up having more students, and then what? You know? Yeah, I mean, if the, if if they want to address, you know, the school shortage in, you know, certain certain in, certain industries, they should start, you know, funding education for, for for things where there are there are no jobs in it. Exactly, they should be focusing on actual places that make the jobs instead of focusing on, you know, the universities. Because the thing is, the more students there are, it doesn't matter because you're not going to increase the amount of jobs there are. Um, or you know, you, you know, you're not going to see a difference in the actual ultimate result. And now we'll move on to our next topic, which is an article that I wrote, uh, Trump Derangement Syndrome, which, <laughs> which, which I'll describe as that it's basically the belief that Trump is the worst person ever to be elected to president. You know, he's, he's the next Hitler, he's a fascist, and it results in people... <laughs> You know, for, uh, looking for reasons to criticize Trump if he makes, you know, one uh, one bad policy decision, or uh, it's, he might appoint one bad person to government. You know, he's awful and the worst. And of course, you know, believing every bad news story uh, about Trump, which of course a lot of the time is fake. Exactly. Um, you know, the, the joke's on you now. I mean, they're complaining that literally Hitler was elected, but. Um... Well, the thing is, you're falling for lies. So, you know, just I hope you don't really have an impact or influence on people because, you know, your IQ is something to marvel at. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, it's a disease that affects, like, all different uh, people of all different political persuasions. I mean, it yeah. obviously affects progressives, you know, because they think Trump is, you know, racist, sexist, uh, bigoted, you know, whatever, <laughs> yeah. um, phobic... <laughs> And of course, it affects you know libertarians who seem to think that oh we were so close to achieving uh, libertopia and it, and it was all <laughs> ruined because you know Trump won. And of course, with conservatives, it's that you know oh he's you know not a uh, he hasn't been a conservative for long enough, and you know he's not an intellectual. I mean, so what? Yeah, um, you know it just 
it's I'm not surprised that the progressives are triggered, but I am really concerned by the fact that there are conservatives who are criticizing him. I mean, we have even in conservative um, news sites, for example, in Fox News, um, Megyn Kelly, for example, he she doesn't really support Trump much. Um, well, she has so, supported him uh, for all throughout the campaign. Yeah, and you know, just I mean, I think because the the Republicans are still part of the establishment, and you know, they still have a neocon um, sort of thing running through the party. I mean, both parties in the U.S. Democrats and Republicans, they have a neocon gene. You know, they they they're one party when it comes to foreign policy, essentially. Um, and I think that's why the conservatives are mainly sort of um, uh, criticizing criticizing Trump because of his um, non neoconservative um, attitude towards foreign policy. Um, but it, it does feel like they're betraying the conservative people. By, by saying so. Well, it's also because he used to be, you know, a, dem- a Democrat uh, uh, many years ago, and he did support uh, single-payer health care, yeah. uh, gun yeah. control and abortion on demand. But, you know, people are allowed to change their political views. I mean, Ronald Reagan started started life as a Democrat. I mean... Pe- exactly. Pe- and plus Trump, you know, he hasn't been in politics all his life. He's been a businessman. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, um, people, the, the conservatives, they love Reagan, but you know, Reagan was a Democrat. So, you know, you're you're being too paranoid um, with that. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, libertarians. Uh, I noticed that a lot of them are because you know uh, John Bolton, who is apparently who is the worst neocon uh, in America. Apparently, his name <laughs> yeah. was floated around for Secretary of State, which I don't think he'll he'll get it, but. Yeah, Terrans are like, see, proof he's awful. He's going to appoint this guy. No, he's not. Like, you know, Trump is probably not even considering him. It's probably, it's you know, it's somebody's probably planted that story in the media on Bolton's behalf. You know, it's probably yeah. dare I say it, fake. <laughs> um, even if he was considering, he's just considering. He hasn't finalized anything. He's considering people from across the board, including some liberals. For example, there's a person he's considering who's um, who supports transgender rights and believes that sex discrimination um, should include trans um, discrimination. So he believes that um, those laws against sex discrimination should include transgender people. Um, so we have a liberal as well. So you know he's considering people from across the board. Um, so there's nothing really to worry about. Yeah, and of course the uh, libertarians are also upset because uh, Jeff Sessions has been appointed yeah. attorney general, and they're and they're and they're all hysterical that oh he's going to launch you know a crackdown on 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 legalized pot. Well, you know, <laughs> we, we don't know that. I mean, that's yeah, that's just you know spe- uh, speculation and. Uh, and, you know, do you think Trump's really going to want to, you know, his highest priority is going to, uh, you know, crack down on marijuana where it's, le- it's legal in states where it's legal? He even said he won't crack down. He won't crack down on gay marriage. He said that. He won't uh, crack down on gay marriage because he said, yeah. yeah. And, and, and even if he appoints people to his administration, which, you know, are more... Uh, you know, conservative on issues. Uh, you know, he's still the president. He has the final say. I mean, uh, the uh, the the cabinet minister, uh, cabinet uh, secretaries, they just have to do what the pre- uh, president uh, instructs them to do. I mean, uh, the president still has the final say on everything. Yeah, and you know, I personally, I want him to appoint conservatives. I I, I don't mind. Um, conservatives at, at all. Yeah, oh, <laughs> so, I'm, ta- yeah. I, I'm speaking to the libertarians when I when I, uh, when yeah. I say these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so we'll move on to. Oh, I'll let you introduce our final topic. Um. Yeah, so our final topic is a very interesting topic. Um. You know, it's. I am writing an article on it. I will publish that today. Um, but it's about um, the relationship between social class and the political spectrum. And, you know, we have seen a, tra- a, a pattern over the ages. I mean, usually the upper classes were more um, towards the right wing. That's the traditional method. So they were more towards the right wing, um, mainly because of their um, economic freedom, um, because the right wing supports economic freedom, capitalism, and they support social con- conservatism, conservatism usually. Um, 
the le- the working classes have been split. You know, many have supported left wing ideologies, but many working class ha- classes have supported right wing as well. Um, but we are seeing a realignment these days, um, and Brexit and Trump sort of signified that. And that was the the biggest sort of events that said there's some sort of readjustment in this um, pattern. Um, and we are seeing lots of white working classes now shifting towards the right wing, and we are seeing progressive upper classes. So we are seeing many people from the upper classes shifting towards the left wing. Um, again, fueled by various reasons. Um, but I think it's very really interesting. And I just want to talk about that phenomenon and what we will see in the future. Yeah, uh, because it's, yeah, it's uh, the key to Trump's victory uh, in the election was he, he won, uh, you know, traditional working class states. He won Ohio, yeah. Pennsylvania, even though they haven't called it yet, he will win Michigan, which are all, exactly. you know, these are, these are what are called the, the Rust Belt states, which, are, you know, were once, you know, industrial manufacturing powerhouses, but of which have which uh, disintegrated with the advent of, um, you know, globalization and globalism. Yeah, um, they were always safe Democrat states, but, you know, they've shifted. The tables have turned and they went for Trump. I mean, out of all people, they went for Trump um, and no one knew that was triggering. So the thing is, you know, the thing is, I, I know that uh, the uh, the upper class, the thing is, it's I think the shift is mainly within our generation. So we have the progressive um we have more progressives and liberals these days, unfortunately. So, um, so those the upper classes, the younger upper class people, are sort of shifting towards that left because I think um, there's a thing called rich guilt these days. Uh, and Tim mentioned it to me before. Um, rich guilt is like you're sort of guilty about being rich, so therefore um, you want to make sure that you want to look like you support the left wing just to sort of get support. It's like it's like white guilt, you know, you're, you're sort of um, using things like white privilege, I'm white, I'm privileged, I get that, um, so therefore I want to sort of support these um, Democrats who are sort of exaggerating the whole racism thing. Um, it's just like that, but there's, it's rich guilt. Um, Oh, and Which is I, interesting. Yeah, it's it's rich guilt, and it's also because you know once you become really wealthy, you've sort of you know all of your needs and wants are pretty much fulfilled, and so then you you turn to sort of more aesthetic uh, things such as you know environmentalism, like well I've you know got a house, a car, uh, you know I've got lots of money to make me comfortable. Uh, now I want, you know, the, uh, the environment to look good. And so that's why uh, the green movement is dominated by, you know, a lot of wealthy people, a lot of uh, rich business people heads in environmental groups because, you know, they've, they've got everything they want. And so, you know, now they're turning their priorities to, uh, to something else. And of course, you know, working class people, they're, they're just trying to, to make ends meet most of the time. And so, you know, they're not worried about, you know, whether there's uh, enough national parks, they're worried about, you know, whether they can, you know, feed their family. You know, the thing is, um, I mean, the rich people have always supported conservatism. I mean, I mean, they've always been the right wing, so traditionally. So it's just weird how, because again, I, I, th- I think that old generations who are upper class are still traditional and right wing. I just think it's mainly these younger generations, so generations sort of millennials and, you know, generation um, Y, um, who are sort of mainly leaning towards the left these days. Do you agree with him? Yeah. I mean, uh, originally, you know, Labour parties and uh, progressive parties, I mean, they supported, you know, working class people. They wanted, you know, industry, manufacturing yeah. jobs and, you know, uh, you know and, uh, you know, working class people also uh, don't like political correctness, you know, don't like, you know, the nanny state being told what to do. And of course, you know, left-wing parties have ad- adopted these policies. So I'd say that's another reason for the realignment as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, you know, where, I don't know where it'll lead us because, um, you know, if, if the new generation is different, you know, does that mean we might see a greater shift the, um, now? Who knows? Um, because when Trump becomes successful and make, does make America great again, you know, people might actually sort of um, 
see the truth. So, you know, there might be things that might go back to normal. Who knows? Well, considering that, uh, yeah, the Democrats and the, the left wing parties here have become, you know, more appealing to the uh, to the elites, and you know, I just mentioned obviously political correctness and, ne- and nanny statism. I mean, yeah, this is what uh, the, uh, the the way the progressive parties are, are heading. And so, if they keep going down down this track, they're going to keep you know alienating working class people. I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, prog- uh, progressive parties seem to be forgotten that. You know, actually, white people can be screwed over by government as well. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. You know, they're not all privileged, as as you allege. And yeah. you know, working class people, they like to you know have a drink, you know, smoke, you know, have it, have it, have a good time. And of course, uh, you know, the left have pretty much become you know the fun police. Yeah, exactly. And um, with the elites, again, we have um, Hillary Clinton was supported by all the companies. Why? Because of her links with Wall Street, because because she supports things like corporate welfare. Um, you know, she supports crony capitalism. She doesn't support free market capitalism. She supports crony capitalism. Um, and that's one. And same with Brexit. I mean, all the Goldman Sachs, all of them were supporting Remain because the EU was helping them you know, flourish, really, because they, they could, the EU was corrupt. I mean, they could um, get laws passed that gave the big companies an advantage. I mean, regulations these days, regulations don't help the poor people. Poor people. Regulations help the big multinationals um, more because through, like, regulations, you actually erase competition, and that's good for the big businesses because the small businesses can't operate with the new regulations. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I'm... I think the vast majority of the upper class are still normal right wing. I'm saying it's just we're seeing a different sort of movement coming in um, with the young gener- generation, and I hope it doesn't go f- far. I hope. <laughs> well, we've seen this uh, uh, this realignment on the cards for a while. I mean, uh, Ronald Reagan. The reason why he was able to win, you know, two landslide victories was because of, as they're called, Reagan Democrats. You know, white working class people who switched yeah. switched from. Uh, from the Democrats and supported supported Reagan, and of course uh, back here in Australia, John Howard. The reason why he was Prime Minister for so long was because of, as they were called, the Howard Battlers, working class people who helped deliver him, you know, victories in, uh, you know, working class areas such as Western Sydney. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They, they and the thing is, and they're also socially conservative. I mean, many of many working class people, as you said, are still socially conservative. And, yeah. And, and Labour is adopting policies that are very, very radically progressive. In Victoria, we have that's the forefront with, um, you know, Daniel Andrews. Yeah. Um, uh, he who must not be named, um, and he he's um, starting safe schools, um, respectful relationships with the radical gender theory, and that's resulting in those socially conservative Labour supporters being disillusioned, resulting in them either supporting Liberal or One Nation. Yeah. Uh, and uh, of course, there's the the new program as well that uh, we yeah. just learnt of, uh, uh, building belonging, which uh, uh, you know teaches three year olds uh, not to be racist. Yeah, it sounds you know sounds triggering, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, so so it's 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 definitely showing no signs. Uh, no signs of slowing this uh, lurch to uh, lurch to the the far left for um, uh, the Labour Party, and of course uh, Mark Latham, who he was only leader of the Labour Party uh, twelve years ago. I mean, he is one of the the most um, uh, the loudest voices against political correctness in Australia. Yet he, you know, still has you know the the uh, the interests of the working class, you know, at his core. And he says, you know, all of these, um, you know, politically correct um, uh, policies, you know, appealing to all these, you know, victim groups. It's got it's got nothing. Uh, you know, that's not going to help the working class. I mean, yeah, yeah. And uh, we must remember that. Um... We, we can't figure out this. We must remember that Bernie Sanders was also there. He was like, Bernie Sanders was the most popular, for example, in America. Um, and he was also just like um, Latham. He was also against political correctness as well. Um, well, I think, so, you know, yeah, I think Bernie Sanders actually would have defeated Trump because he would have been able to talk yeah. to these working class people in Ohio, Pennsylvania and Michigan. Exactly. I, I, I don't agree with his... 
uh, solutions, but no. he knew how to talk to them. He did. Um, he. The thing is, you know, I'm lecturing about this whole shift, but the thing is, I feel like I'm forgetting the big fact. You know, we have Bernie Sanders, and he was talking to the working class, and he would, he may have won. It's just that he was um, rejected by the DNC. The DNC was rigged by Hillary, and then he was rejected. And the thing is, many Bernie supporters had to turn for tr turn to Trump because Trump was actually. You know, giving so quite some of his policies were quite similar. Um, he was um actually appealing to the working class, um, and many switched to Donald Trump. And um, many from the many working class people from the older gener generations were shifting to Donald Trump. Um, so yeah, I think um you know there, there is a shift, but you know we must remember that Bernie, Bernie Sanders was also there. And if Bernie Sanders was the candidate, then you know most people would have voted for him anyway, and we wouldn't really be seeing a big shift really ultimately and of course uh, michael moore was another one uh, you know the the left-wing filmmaker he predicted uh, a trump victory as well i mean uh in the end he supported hillary even though hillary yeah. was supported by all the major you know corporations, corporations. And, yep. yeah but you know he you know understood why the working class switched to trump he did he, um he People, it's obvious. I mean, Hillary is a corporatist. Um, she gave her speeches. You know, she she said, "I have a private side and a public side." So you know, I'll sort of have my own views to myself, but to the plebs, I'll say something else, um, just to keep them quiet, and I'll control the plebs. Um, uh, we and try and that's yeah. my policies yeah we saw like obviously in the wikileaks emails you know what she thought of various groups yeah yeah and, yeah yeah and not forgetting her basket of deplorables comment that and as well as um, a bucket of losers for yeah. low social capital individuals in america yeah. um that's nice the and, basement dwellers yeah she called uh, bernie sanders supporters that so yeah so you know if the if the left continues with you know attitudes such as that they're going to keep losing uh elections i mean now that trump you know has been able to win those key working class states yeah you know, it's I mean, the Democrats and the left, they've got, a, they've got a big task ahead of them to, you know, prove to, you know, the working class people that, you know, they actually care about them and, you know, dump this, uh, this whole, uh, you know, f uh, crusade against political correctness. And they've definitely, uh, the left have definitely got their work cut out for them. They have, and they they'll if they take this path, then they'll keep losing, um, you know, the majority of voters because you know they're disillusioning many people. Um, they'll only have those Gen Y millennial rich people to support them, and that's that's not enough for them. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of uh, today's review episode. So once again, thank you for listening. Uh, hope you hope you enjoyed our. Our, th our thoughts and views on views on the issues and don't forget the this show is uh now available to subscribe on itunes stitcher and tune in radio and you can also see uh, video versions of the podcast on youtube as well so there's heaps of different ways to listen to us isn't there there are, and I just want to remind everyone that uh, we made a survey um and I would really love it if you could fill it out and tell me what you think, because ultimately it's for you. I mean, we want to improve for you. Um, so there's a survey on our on our Facebook page. It's on. Um, please fill it out. Um, and thanks. <laughs> yep. And so Thursday will be another one of our interview episodes. We we have got a guest lined up, which uh, I, w I won't tell you who yet because uh, we've we're still not one hundred percent sure if we'll have that guest. But um, yeah, we are we are looking forward to bringing you another another interview show on Thursday. Don't forget to check out the Unshackled.net for all of our latest articles, and we're also continuing to roll out our uh, Unshackled Fast videos. So they're posted on Facebook and YouTube. So make sure yeah. you check out those. Please do. <laughs> All right. Goodbye for now. And once again, thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye.